Hi everyone. It's so wonderful to be with you. I've missed you so, so much. And I just want to take this opportunity to just share some experiences I've been through with the Lord from my new book, Visions from Heaven 2, which is actually called Wounded Warriors Out of the Wilderness. And it's so great to be with you. It's wonderful. But this gets, I'm going to read a little bit first. This is, it's, it, this is just the manuscript, okay? And I will put on my glasses that I hope are, I can see through, okay? Because I always seem to get them, whatever. Okay. This was, this was, I was taken, I was literally taken to a council chamber where Satan was in consultation with his princes. And I'm going to now read to you from this, okay? So good to be with you, can't help it. <laughs> okay, but this is serious. Because um, I know so many of you, like I have, and so, so many ministers of the gospel have. And, um, you know, everywhere I've turned, it's like everyone um, has been through a very, very different phase, a very wilderness phase where for the last few years where where it has seemed at times that the heavens have been brass, where many, many of those who normally would hear so clearly and so easily and miracles were so easy in coming, the body of Christ has, has there's been a sifting, there's been a different kind of um, season and a, it's a transition season and Guys, we are about to all come out together. We really, really are. The shift is here. But uh, let, let me just read this to you now. Okay, so he and his princes, the demonic princes, they were discussing intensively how successful their strategy against the church had been. I saw a five-year plan, but it was a past plan, one that had already been implemented. Then the room fell silent and a huge bound book was placed on the table. And somehow I just knew that this was the book of the champions of God. Satan hated this book with a deep ferocity, but it, I could see that it really still fascinated him. I heard them call the champions their primary targets. Many files were placed on the table and each file contained a tailor-made strategy to render those champions weak, helpless, despairing, um, hope deferred. Against these champions, there had been violent, brutal assignments that had been intricately designed to try and destroy the man, woman, or ministry with only one goal, which was to steal the mantle that had been placed from heaven upon their lives. Um, Satan and his counsel were, seemed to be scoffing and triumphant. Then they walked through dark corridors to what was called the trophy room. And um, Satan seemed to be in his element, but as he walked towards Jehu, there was a huge section of mantles far, far towards the back. And the glory and the presence exuding from them caused him intense agony and rage. Could see his absolute rage and his rage was at the glory. And I saw the word over his head, Ichabod, the glory had depart has departed. And I realized that he feared and was actually in absolute terror of the glory and hated it because he lost it and he could never ever regain it. But we, as the father's children, we have access to it. And then I saw the entire tro trophy room start to shudder like a tornado and the most beautiful, intense, blazing light surrounded everything. And Satan and his gods were paralyzed and suddenly uh, it was like the words were there, it is time, it is now time for the shift and time to recover all. And then I could hear the voice, that wondrous voice, which you know, which I know, which made hell tremble. It was the father's voice. And the father said, it is enough. And with that, the angels and the mantles disappeared. And I suddenly understood why so, so many Christians, why so, so many called out ones had almost been suffocated in their lives and in their callings these past months and years. And this is the word of the Lord. The mantles are coming back. They are being returned. And I believe with all my heart that in these coming months, we literally will see ministries, families, finances, mantles restored. There's going to be incredible restitution. 
Beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, financial turnaround, prodigals released from bondage. And I saw a huge, it was like a real monstrous, like demon, like, like a bat, be evicted over the saints and bound up. And it was anxiety and fear of the future. So what is written here is take heart, beloved, beloved child of the most high, if that is what you have been through. It's part of what I've been through. It's part of what so many that I, people I know and love have been through because your father, our father, has just called time out on the enemy. And so beloved darling hearts, take heart today because your king is coming. And now I just want to pray. I just want to pray for those of you, you know, the Lord said, Jesus said, he said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. He said, I came to set the captive free. He said, I came, um, I, I came to set at liberty those who are bruised. And yet it's the, the thing about mental trauma or heart, heart, hope deferred, making the heart sick, um, our hearts being bruised is something in the church um, we, 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 we do talk about it, and there are some amazing places where the ministry um, for trauma and for, for um, heartbreak is amazing. But generally in the church, so many of us, when we're failing or when we're sort of um, having such a hard time and such a battle with such warfare that we don't completely understand, we, we, the Satan is the accuser of the brethren, as we know, and he makes us, he assigns our minds and makes us feel so ashamed. So if you felt ashamed because you're not walking in absolute victory, okay, we all know that. Let me just say it this way, right? I grew up, I became a Christian in the time of the word of faith, all right, which was in the late 70s, 1980s. What we have to understand is that when the Lord, when the, when the Holy Spirit theologically illuminates um, a, a, a strand of doctrine to us, it's meant to be built into us. You know, it's one part of like a whole um, 360 hemisphere, and it might be like a 10% of the hemisphere, but we can't continue to co just look at that 10% of doctrine for the next 20, 30 years because the father's been building other things in. He's been building um, the prophetic. He's been building the glory. He's been building many, many, many other things in. And so we, we have to, we have, he's, he's teaching all of us as we go. And so for, I'm going to pray for all. If, listen, if you have, firstly, if you have felt ashamed because you've been just desperately struggling, if you have felt the heavens of brass, um, if you, ha which is unlike you, if you have felt that the miracles that used to come so easily, um, they just aren't coming like they used to. And if you have felt burned out and like you're still in the wilderness, stand up right now, right now in your homes. And I'm going to pray for you. And I know I'm coming into a huge transition shift. And I know that um, even Sean Bowles, when he prophesied over me at, when I spoke at Bethel at the School of Media, and he said that because I'm a prophet to, to the nations, God, you, God will use me as a signpost. So when it happens for me, that's what I'm saying. And please, it's no big ego maniac shakes. That's not what I mean, okay? Those of you who know me, hopefully know that, okay? But it means that that it's a it's a prophetic action. It's a prophetic like the prophets of old. It's something that God is doing prophetically because it's a sign to the church. So, Father, Father, for all those ones standing, don't be ashamed to stand of your families there either, guys. Come on, <laughs> Father, I just thank you for for these beautiful, amazing viewers, for these wonderful sons and daughters. And Father, I know that many of them were spoken or unspoken, have been through absolute hell in the last, in the last transition time. And so Father, right now, I just pray for each of them. If you just lift your hands right now, and excuse my nails are nearly falling off, so just excuse that, okay? So right now. So Father, 
Father, you prophesied over me when I was young. Father, you said, Father, that I would, I would, I would enter into the realm. I would cross over into the realm of the supernatural, Father, not in my ability, but in your ability. And so, Father, right now, as a corporate body, we cross over together into the realm of the supernatural that the, the yoke of the enemy may be destroyed in these lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I release the anointing. I release the the glory. I release the glory. I release the glory. I release the glory. I release the presence, the presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, who went through so much trauma and of the Father, our glorious Father himself. I release that glory right now into every single television household that watching right now on God TV. And Father, I thank you that your glory and your presence break the yoke of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you, Father, for the comfort of your Holy Spirit, Father. And I thank you, Father, for a breaking, Father, Father, of the stalemate of the wilderness. And the Father says it's now time where we as a body in this dispensation, we are coming out of the wilderness. We are coming and I'm going to decree it as a prophet. I thank you, Father. Father, I thank you. Father, that these ones are coming out of the wilderness. Father, I thank you for the shift. I thank you for the supernatural shift, Father, that they will see their dreams. You will see your dreams in the land of the living. And for you, for you, and I can feel the Father's compassion and tears for you who have just been crying out to the Lord at night and saying, Father, it's enough. No more pain, please. No more hope deferred. It's continual hope deferred. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father is saying to you, the season of hope deferred is coming swiftly to an end in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I thank you for restitution. I thank you for restoration, Father. I thank you, Father, for the new season, Father. I thank you for a brand new day, Father. And for those of you, and I can feel for some of you saying, Wendy, I know I've believed it for so long that I've heard it. I've heard it through the prophets for so long. And it's just the same. Hope keeps getting deferred. And the father would say to you, my darling, I know it's been such a hard walk and it's been hard for so many, but this is seasonal and this is transitional and this is for the body of Christ. We are, there has been unprecedented warfare, unprecedented warfare in these past few years. And it is now on the father's commission. It is drawing to an end. So take heart take heart today. I love you so much. And I just thank you, Father, for the restitution, the restoration, your love, Father, for businesses, for businesses reactivated, for finance, for financial turnarounds, Father. Father, for marriage, for reconciliation, Father, for those who are single, bereaved or divorced, Father, that you sovereignly come in there and sweep them off your feet, Father, that there will be no more loneliness, that, that people, they will just feel so loved. I've caught up on there. Father, I thank you. And Father, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your presence. And I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your glory, Father, to, to, to these ones, these precious, 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 precious ones. And the Father says, to, don't give up. Don't give up. You're nearly there. You're nearly there. And he loves you so much. With so much love from my heart to yours, Wendy.